Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. Our devotions are coming from Joanna Weaver's book called At the Feet of Jesus, and it is Saturday, November the 12th. Our opening scripture comes from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12. I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. When I received word that my mother had suffered a massive heart attack and was being rushed into emergency surgery, I immediately began driving the 150 miles south to be with her. That was 14 years ago, before I had a cell phone, so I endured two hours without any updates, without any word of how the surgery was going. I wasn't even certain my mother was still alive. As I prayed and drove and prayed and drove some more, I found myself giving my mother to the Lord, entrusting her to his care. And with the surrender came a peace, a sweet peace like none I'd ever known before. I knew it was going to be okay. Have you ever been in a scary situation like that? I haven't. I mean, I've we've had family emergencies and urgent things, but not like that. But please understand, I still didn't know if she would be okay. The peace I felt wasn't a promise that my mother would survive the surgery. In fact, I found out later that she actually died on the table for a few minutes. The peace that enfolded me as I drove toward the unknown promised only this. Toward the unknown promised only this. It would be okay. Whatever it turned out to be. I think we don't want to experience loss or tragedy. I mean, who does, right? We don't want to go there in our emotions or to imagine life in the what if the worst case scenario happens. We don't want to experience that. So we don't trust God to help us in that moment, I think is what it comes down to. Whatever we're facing, no matter the circumstances, no matter how horrific or horrible, we have to trust the Lord with it and give it to him and say, Lord, only you can do this. Only you can help me in this. Only you can perform a miracle. Only you can, you know, fill in the blank. We have to get to that place and then things like that are not going to impact us the way the devil would want them to impact us. As I opened my hand, <clears throat> as I opened my hand and surrendered my mom to God, to the God who loved her even more than I did, I felt a quiet joy fill my heart. A sweet underlying sense of okayness that surpassed happiness. The settled peace I felt was a gift from the Lord, not something I could have worked up on my own. Lazarus must have felt that same peace when he walked out of the tomb and back into life, but magnified a hundredfold and tinged with amazing joy. For he had traveled to the place we humans avoid most, death, and he found God waiting there. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 through 15, and we're reflecting, have you ever felt enslaved to the fear of death? Who came to set you free? Now, that's one thing as believers, when we face our own death or the death of a loved one, Satan tries to put fear of death in you. And to a certain extent, our will to live comes from the Lord. We're not just going to lay down and just let our lives. I mean, when we're in a life death situation, our body physically begins to respond in a way towards survival. We don't want to die because we've been given the will to live because life is precious. That's why we cling to it. That's why we don't uh, seek for death. 
It's precious. Okay, but the Bible also talks about, you know, when our heart is secure, when we've surrendered our soul to the Lord. We've made him the Lord and Savior of our life. The word of God tells us that it's precious to him when we go home to be with him. That means when we die in our physical bodies, our time here is done. God knows the number of appointed days. Okay. When our mansion is done, boom, we're gone. And that's not a bad thing. Our family grieves because they love us. That's the price we pay for love. But our soul, our spirit is eternal. It lives forever. So everything you knew about your loved one, everything that made them who they are, which came from the father is still alive and well living eternally, hopefully with their heavenly father. The grief would come if you did not know. If your loved one was not saved, that is where horrible grief would come into play. We must lift up our loved ones for salvation consistently, even if they seem far gone, because they are loved by the Father more than we could ever comprehend. All right, Hebrews 2, verses 14 and 15. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who said, who had the power of death. Did you hear that? Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son of Man also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Ask the Lord to give you even deeper revelation of all of this. Because it, of course, we have a will to live. Because I said, life is precious. But the fear of dying. God doesn't want us to be afraid to die if we know him. It's precious. Not that we're to snuff out our life early. Or live in a way that shortens our life. Because we're not taking care of our temple. We're not eating properly. We're not exercising. We're not doing the things that promote good, strong health. We can't be a fool and live stupidly and expect God to bless that. Okay. Putting yourself in deliberate danger, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not talking about careers and whatnot that are on the dangerous side. Sometimes you, you know what I'm talking about. You need to take care <coughs> and see, I'm on the tail end of a little sniffle I caught while I was on vacation. Could have been the weather change, but Satan has made us a slave to the fear of death. Jesus came and he conquered death, hell, and the grave. He snatched them away from the devil. He doesn't have that power anymore unless we give it to him. I'm not giving the thief a dime. I'm not giving him a thing. Okay? I'm not afraid. And the Lord tells us that. Do not be afraid. Okay? All right, let's pray. I know how awful the grip of that fear is. Again, me with the hiccups. I don't know why I get nervous. I know how crippling it can feel. You just have to know your Heavenly Father loves you, and He doesn't want you to be afraid of that for yourself or a loved one. If you have a loved one who's in ill health, and it seems that their physical body is about to give out, I know how hard that is. Trust them to the Lord. Let God fill you with his peace. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word today. Thank you for opening our eyes to it, Father. 
that we no longer be slaves to the fear of death because you have conquered death, hell, and the grave. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices you've made on our behalf. Help us to see what we need to see, to hear what we need to hear, and to surrender to you those things the enemy uses to trip us up, to make us stumble in our own faith walk with you. Draw us closer to yourself, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. If these devotions are blessing you or helping you and grow in your walk with the Lord, please consider liking and subscribing, clicking that notification bell, and come back and check out some of the other fun content I have on my channel. God bless you and bye until next time.